Good day, I'm Ben Seymour of Kudzu Patch Productions. I have another instrument to show you today. Uh, this is an interesting instrument. This just came to me for some repairs. Uh, it wasn't in bad shape, uh, but uh, considering. And uh, it uh, needed, it had a crack, some cracks in the headstock and stuff like that. And, uh, but everything else was pretty, pretty well solid, had no nut or saddle or anything like that. And, uh, but uh, some interesting aspects to this. This on the back said it was made by in 620-1924. So it's got some age on it. And it was by V period A period Lale. So that was a V.A. Lale. Uh, don't know anything about who V.A. Lale may have been. Uh, he or she, uh, probably a he. But uh, anyhow, uh, thought I'd just uh, got this thing all fixed up. It had no pegs, and so I fitted it with, with four pegs. Now, this had four peg holes, okay? So now the traditionalists will say, no, a dulcimer only has three strings. Well, sorry. But uh, anyhow, for those guys. But uh, anyhow, it also has a strange little fifth hole up here at the top, and I have no idea what that was for. Uh, one side is about five sixteenths, the other side is about an eighth of an inch. Uh, so it was a whole lot smaller. It's not for a pig, obviously, but uh, something must have gone in there at some point. So, uh, not sure what, though. So anyhow, this is it. Uh, the whole thing's made out of poplar. Uh, I first thought, when glancing at it, that it was made out of walnut, but uh, it's just, it's got like brown paint on it or brown stain or something like that. And the wood itself, of course, has gotten so dark with age. And, uh, but uh, after messing with it and having to replace a little broken piece down here on the end, uh, it was like, ah, that's, that's poplar. That's what that is. So uh, anyhow, so it, here it has been replaced with, with poplar. And I put in a new nut and saddle. Interesting thing about how the strings were attached. It wasn't one of those horrible, like, just little posts that come out the end where all the strings wrap around them. And that way, if one breaks and it's not the one on the top, you have to take everything off again and then replace that one string, which is a little pain. Bad design. But uh, this one has a little, had a little piece of metal, heavy metal wire, run across at the bottom. And that's where the strings were attached. Uh, I could tell because there were strings still left on there, so the, the ends of strings. Uh, I used ball end strings because I could just flip it back through and make a loop and stuff. But they're attached, once again, on this piece of metal down here that holds them. So each string is individual now. And, uh, you know, if one breaks or something like that, you can just pop it off and put on another one. So the uh, top and the back are could be used for bookshelves. I mean, they're, they're pretty thick. They're, they're a quarter of an inch. Uh, so it's like... Uh, couldn't really tell about the sides. I don't have a way to get in there. Uh, these, the sound holes are really, really small, and so it would be difficult to get in there and uh, try and get any kind of measurement from, from those sides. But this is what we got, um, and uh, you know, it was, uh, has staple frets all the way across. Sorry again, traditionalist, 1924, but they went all the way across the fretboard. So uh, anyhow, uh, so uh, those were all still intact, except for one that was missing, so I replaced it. Uh, the wire size happened to be uh, .040, so it was something that I could get hold of. I uh, actually had some. And right here, too, on the, the strum hollow, not really a strum hollow, but the strum area, uh, has that piece of metal going across it, like some of the Tennessee music boxes and stuff like that, to keep it from being torn up. So uh, that's a good, good idea there as well. But, so I thought I'd give you a little bit of this. It doesn't have a whole lot of sound on it, but I thought I'd play the tune, a tune or something, so you can hear it. And uh, I thought I might do Little Buffalo Boy. Now, I'm going to sing both the female and the male parts. And, of course, if I was in Florida, I might get arrested for doing that. But here we go. So a little bit of Buffalo Boy. Buffalo boy, 
I'll come on Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. I guess I'll come on Saturday if the weather's alright. When we gonna get married, married, married? When we gonna get married, a little buffalo boy? I guess we'll marry on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yes, we'll marry on Sunday if the weather's alright. I guess I'll come in the ox car, the ox car, the ox car. Yes, I'll come in the ox car if the weather's alright. Why don't you come in the buggy, the buggy, the buggy? Why don't you come in the buggy, my little buffalo boy? Huh. Ox won't fit in the buggy, the buggy, the buggy. Ox won't fit in the buggy, even if the weather's alright. Oh, who's gonna bring to the wedding, the wedding, the wedding? Who's gonna bring to the wedding, my little buffalo boy? Let's see. Yes, I'll bring my children, my children, my children. Yes, I'll bring my children if the weather's alright. Oh, didn't know you had any children, children, children. Didn't know you had any children, my little buffalo boy. Well, yeah, I've got five children, children. Children, children, I've got my children, six if you count just right. Oh, ain't gonna be no wedding, 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 ain't gonna be no wedding, my little buffalo boy. Well, let's see, I've got five million dollars, dollars, dollars. I got five million dollars, six if you count this right. Oh, when we gonna get married, married, married? When we gonna get married, my little buffalo boy? So, scale's a little funky there, and, uh, of course, I lost lost my voice on one point there, but anyhow, you get the idea. So, but like I said, it doesn't have a whole lot of whole lot of volume to it. Um, the scale's pretty accurate up until about the seventh fret, and then it gets really funky on the upper end. But uh, anyhow, there's not much you can do about that at this point unless you refretted the whole thing. But this is more for its historical value, and it's a really interesting little piece. Like I said, uh, made in 1924 by V. A. Lael. And obviously he knew what he was doing. Uh, pretty good woodwork and stuff like this. Although the whole thing is nailed together. Um, and, you know, uh, there's nails for the top, nails for the bottom, um, nails on the sides, backs, everything is nailed together. Uh, so it may be glued as well. Uh, not sure. Uh, probably. But uh, anyhow, uh, and like I said, the top and the back are really, really super thick. And so that kills much, most, most of the sound. But it is a playable thing, so it was nice to get this back into play condition. Okay, well, there it is, and I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have any repairs that you need done, or if you have any custom instruments that you'd like built, feel free to contact us, and you can always find us at www.kudzupatch.net. Thanks a lot for listening. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.